Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got another thrift store find, and it's actually almost a brand new guitar. It's a Lix Pro, L-Y-X, and you can find these things on Amazon for pretty low money, but I got this one from a thrift store for under 50 bucks. I thought we could go through it today, we'll take it apart, we'll look and see what's inside, check out the components, take some measurements, do all that normal stuff that we usually do in my teardown videos. So let's talk about some of the specs of this guitar. So this body appears to be solid wood, and it's got this trans finish to it. We'll take it apart to make sure it's solid wood, but just based on what we see here, I think we can assume that safely. The finish is kind of a trans red. It complements the white and black theme of the guitar nicely. As you can see, we've got a three-layer pickguard, white pickups, but all the other plastics are black, black screws, and other black hardware, including the bridge. This hardware is kind of Squire or Starcaster level stuff. The strap buttons are not very big, and the finish on the black bridge and other black hardware does not look very durable. However, it is quite a cool look for such a low price, so I think that can be forgiven. In terms of the configuration, you can see three standard strap pickups, a volume and two tone knobs, and a five-way switch. I've already measured out the electronics, and the pickups measure out at 48, 50, and 52 millimeter pull spacing. The bridge is also 52 millimeter spacing. I think we can go ahead and get some pickup readings, so let's go ahead and do that. Well, I'm starting to see why this guitar may have ended up at the thrift store. If I move this cable around too much, it loses signal, so I think there's something wrong with the jack. In fact, I'm gonna have to hold this for the duration of the test to make sure it gets good signal. But the bridge pickup is about 5.84K. Middle pickup is 5.71K and the neck pickup is 5.52k. So they're kind of in the vintage range, I would say, for output, and they are graduated a little bit, so the neck pickup has a little bit less output than the middle, which has a little bit less output than the bridge. Up here on the headstock, you can see that it's got the same black hardware theme. It's kind of a beak-shaped headstock, maybe like an old Kramer, and the nut is definitely plastic. It's about 42 millimeters wide, so it would be comfortable for an adult to play. There's no truss rod cover, and there's quite a deep hole to access the truss rod if needed. The fretboard does not look like rosewood to me. It appears to be some kind of a dyed material. It's supposed to resemble ebony. I don't really know what the material is. If I can find that online, I'll post it here in the video. But the neck material does appear to be maple, and there is no skunk stripe on the back. I've already been doing some tuning, and I can tell you that these tuners are probably about 15 to 1 ratio. They aren't very precise, and they really don't hold a tune all that well but it's kind of what you would expect for an entry-level guitar, and they're not all that bad. And here's a view of the back of the body, and you can see more of that transparent finish here. I think I see one more piece to the body, so I think I count one, two, three pieces. Again, black neck plate to match the rest of the theme, and there is a gasket on this neck plate. Three springs here on the tremolo. Tremolo cavity cover is kind of a satin finish, and it just has the six holes for access for the strings. It's definitely a thin block tremolo, so it's not a full-size block, but it's definitely what you would expect to find. Okay, well, I think the only thing left to do is dig into this thing a little further. Let me go ahead and detune the strings, throw a capo on, and then we'll take the neck off. And by the way, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to save the strings. Well, there was no shim here in the neck pocket, so that's nice to see. It looks like a pretty standard Stratocaster heel and an overhang for the 22nd fret. Let's dig into these electronics and see what's inside. All right, well, now that we're inside, we can see that it has an HSH routing pattern, and it already has the recesses for the humbucker screws or the adjustment screws, even for a deep single coil screw. And everything seems to be pretty standard in here, except there is no shielding of any kind. They don't seem to employ the use of shielded wire very much, at least not for the jack, because there are separate ground and signal wires for the jack. I'll try to take a reading on these pots shortly, but they are mini pots. It has two separate tone capacitors, which I find to be interesting. A standard sort of PCB style five-way switch, and then ceramic magnets on each one of the single coils. Let me go ahead and get that reading off of that pot. All right, well, all the pots seem to be 500K, which I've seen quite often on these less expensive guitars. Usually the typical value for a Strat is 250K. Now, since we have an issue with this jack, let's go ahead and take that apart and see what kind of jack they use. Well, pretty standard jack in here, except the dimensions of it are all just a bit smaller than a normal Switchcraft jack. And I'm sure that's why it loosened up. 
just because this conductor here is quite thin. I think for sake of a repair, I'm just going to go ahead and put a switchcraft jack in this thing. They're not very expensive and it'll make the guitar last a lot longer. Okay, I went ahead and removed the pick guard to make this repair a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and replace these two individual wires for the jack with this one shielded wire that I happen to have left over from a Squire disassembly. It's about the same length, so I think it'll work fine and it'll provide just a little bit of protection of noise. Okay, and then the only other thing I needed to do in order to install this, I had to enlarge the size of the hole in this jack because the Switchcraft jack is Imperial spec or US spec and it requires a 3 8 hole. But once that's done, it installs normally. Okay, so that's the complete repair, brand new jack. And before I put everything completely back together, I just wanna give it a test. Okay, so now, my readings are actually a little bit higher. I'd say they're probably about 0.05, maybe 0.1 higher than they were before. So that one's good. Middle pickup, fine. And bridge pickup is good. But the main thing is, no matter how much I shake this, I don't see any change in the value. So I have a nice solid connection. Now while we're on the subject of mods, I think it's worth mentioning that I did check to see if this was a standard size pick guard and it's not quite. The location of the holes and the pickups is very standard, but if I put a regular strat pick guard on top of this, the pick guard underneath is just a little bit wider in a couple of spots. It's not quite as long down here by the lower horn, and the space in between the neck and the bridge is just a little bit off. It's not much more than a millimeter, but it's enough to where the bridge would hit it here and then over here on the corner where the arm sits. The screw holes are also in the wrong location, so there are multiple problems with trying to upgrade this guitar using a standard Stratocaster pickguard. I only really mention that because I happen to mod guitars quite a bit, and I want to point out anything that's going to prevent you from being able to do the upgrades that you want. Just a couple more notes about things I forgot to mention when we were doing the teardown. I believe this body is Polonia, and it definitely is a solid wood body. Also, let's check out the neck radius, and it looks like that's a 14. So it's a little bit flatter of a neck than a Squire. Well, I've got a lot of screws to put back in, so let me do that and then we'll wrap up. All right, well, she's back together and that's more or less it for our Lix Pro for the day. I guess my overall review of the guitar, in terms of the components, it's a pretty solidly built guitar. Yes, it's a little bit on the less expensive side, but all in all, I'd say it's put together pretty well. Even the fret job has really no sharp edges and everything seems to be pretty good in terms of fit and finish. As a mod platform, it's probably not all that great because I think a lot of the components are non-standard, but you could always do a bridge upgrade, tuner upgrades, pot upgrades, pickup upgrades, and things like that. As far as how it stacks up against competitors, I think in terms of the Glary guitar that I reviewed in the past, it's much better than that. Anyway, I hope that's helpful, and if you choose to get one of these things, I don't think you'll be disappointed for the price. As always, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me through this episode. Thanks for all the likes and the comments. Thanks for the subscriptions. Be sure to check out the Hacks Guitar Hobby Facebook group, and also check out my Amazon links, and I'll see you guys next time.